Hi, my name is Andrew Liu. My name is Ben Walker, and, and this, this is, is Crash Course, Course World, World History. History. Today we're talking about the space race. The space race was a competition between the Soviets and the United States. While the space race brought fear and suspicion to both sides, it also brought a new focus to science technology and fostered new funding for inventions. Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, America is clearly the winner, right? Well, actually, the USSR not only had the first satellite in space, but the first man as well, Yuri Gagarin. So the space race arose as a byproduct from the Cold War. And each side tried to prove its technological superiority and therefore its economical system. After World War II, the US and Soviets each took German engineers who designed the B-2 missile, the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. The space race was on! On October 4th, 1957, the USSR surprised the world by sending the first satellite into orbit, the Sputnik. Less than a month later, the Soviets sent another spacecraft into orbit, this time holding an animal. By sending Laika the dog into space, the USSR became the first ever to send a living organism into space. Four months later, the Americans sent their own satellite into space, Explorer 1. The new interest in space travel was evident in both countries. Under President Eisenhower, the NASA program was created on July 29, 1958. They also initiated Project Mercury, a plan to put a man in orbit and have him return safely, ideally before the Soviets. Civilian life was also affected because of technology, media, and education. Resources were diverted to the effort of becoming the better country. A newfound focus on science and math was born. However, the U.S. would still continue to be behind the Soviets. The Soviets again shocked the Americans when they sent the first man into orbit, Yuri Gagarin, in April of 1960. John F. Kennedy knew that to restore American faith and confidence, they would need to not only match the Soviet space power, but surpass them as well. On May 25th, 1961, Kennedy announced that the U.S. would have a man on the moon before the end of the decade. The Americans would send John Glenn into space on February 20th, 1962, and he would become the first American into orbit. The Soviets would bounce back by sending the first woman into space, Valentina Tereshkova. The Americans then initiated the Gemini program in order to develop technologies for the upcoming Apollo missions. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission was launched into space. It was the first manned mission that succeeded in landing people on the moon. Apollo 11 consisted of Neil Armstrong as commander, Michael Collins as the command module pilot, and Buzz Aldrin as the lunar module pilot. It was launched from the Kennedy Space Center and traveled to the moon in about 75 hours. However, things were not perfect. Many malfunctions occurred and the lunar module had to be landed manually. But the mission succeeded. As the world watched in anticipation, Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon to give his famous words. The American success of the moon landing effectively ended the space race. The Soviet's lunar mission also failed from 1969 to 1972 due to various reasons. But why did the Soviets lose? Accounts of Soviets say the government only spent about 4.5 billion rubles while the U.S. invested 25 billion U.S. dollars into the space race. The U.S. would continue to send manned moon missions after the space race ended. One well-known mission is the Apollo 13. Let's, Let's go, go to the, the thought, thought bubble. bubble. The Apollo 13 mission was arguably the most famous mission for its crew's amazing survival. It has also appeared in pop culture numerous times, including Family Guy and the Apollo 13 movie. The Apollo 13 mission launched on April 11, 1970 from the Kennedy Space Center. Its crew consisted of James Lavelle, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes. It was planned to be the third moon landing. However, there were unforeseen troubles. Apollo 13's second oxygen tank was previously damaged in training, but the spacecraft builders were not aware of a problem. 56 hours into flight, Swigger was instructed to stir the oxygen tanks. However, the tank exploded from the damage acquired earlier. The command module would rapidly lose power after this, so the crew had to quickly move into the lunar module. However, the lunar module was designed for two, so Swigger kept mainly in the back. The lunar module also did not have enough CO2 ejectors, so the crew had to build their own out of scrap parts. Also, when the tank exploded, the Apollo 13 was off course and would miss Earth by a thousand miles, so the crew had to pulse their thrusters to return safely to Earth. Despite the struggles of a shortage of heat, 
water, and oxygen, the crew made it back alive. Now time for the open letter, but first, let's see what's this year's compartment today. Oh cool, a tech suit! Dear Spacers, you might be no most known for the competition you served between two countries, but the, the inventions you fostered are significantly more important. And not only are they still used today, but they greatly impact people's survivability and comfort. Some of your inventions include adjustable smoke detectors, satellite TV, freeze-dried food, space blankets, memory foam, cordless vacuum cleaners, and swimming tech suits. However, our most favorite invention was freeze-dried food, such as astronaut ice cream. It tastes very good. While the space race took place in a time of fear, it also brought with it many technological innovations. So that's the space race in six minutes, and I hope that was helpful. Crash Course is directed by me and Ben. Our script writers are me. Our camera workers are Mason. And as we say in our hometown, Keep your eye on the goal! Don't let your kids watch it!